Ladies and gentlemen, from her earliest days, our next speaker knew that she wanted to represent her country to the world. She studied diplomacy in Vienna and later went to Zagreb before being called into her nation's diplomatic service. She braved the frozen wastelands of Canada to represent her nation. She was later called home and then went from diplomacy into politics and once again represented her nation, becoming the Minister for European Integration and later the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Even when she stepped out of those roles, she again represented her country by becoming the ambassador to the largest economy in the world, the United States of America. She has negotiated the thorny issues in places like NATO, Ladies and gentlemen, when she returned to politics, she went on to attain the highest office in the land. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have with us today Her Excellency, the President of Croatia, Kolinda Grabar Kutorovic. Please. much, dear Mr. Altuntas, uh, your excellencies, uh, dear statesmen, dear Congress participants, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, thank you very much for this wonderful and very kind introduction of my country and myself. I am truly honored and genuinely pleased to address you today at the World Congress of Angel Investors. I am all the more to be delighted here because I have done my best to support the private sector during my presidential term and to draw attention to the importance of removing obstacles to growth, development, and entrepreneurship. It is my pleasure to be here after the IBAN Winter Conference in Zagreb in December of 2016 and the IBAN uh, participation in the first Three Seas Initiative Summit in Dubrovnik that same year. I am also pleased that the World Business Angels Investment Forum has entrusted Croatia to host the World Business Angels Investment Forum's office for the European Union. Today's event shows us how far things have progressed and that we are together on the right path. This is a major acknowledgement of the results achieved in my country and all the efforts that we're undertaking to build a modern business environment. At the same time, it presents an opportunity for us to boldly step forward into the world of new business opportunities, of progress and development by bringing together young European entrepreneurs and investors from all over the world. This is important not only for Croatia, but also for the European Union. Our citizens expect and anticipate the creation of new jobs and a more socially just, secure, and prosperous union. I particularly appreciate that the World Business Angels Investment Forum has offered Croatia an opportunity to expand its knowledge about a world that we all seek to become part of. A world in which innovations are the starting point of growth and job creation. A world which opens up new possibilities for personal advancement and a better life for our youth. We especially support the European aspirations of our neighbors and the whole neighborhood of Southeast Europe. In this respect, Croatia believes that it is in the vital interest of the European Union that Turkey remains on the European path, the path of EU accession. We see Turkey as an EU candidate country and an important partner in view of common challenges and interests, particularly with regard to mitigating the refugee crisis and in the fight against terrorism. Not so long ago, in 2008, when the global economy was hit hard by the economic crisis, Croatia was beset by heavy indebtedness, falling domestic product, decreasing industrial production and liquidity, and significant job losses. Seven years of great difficulty ensued. However, 
Ever since, we've been doing a lot better. Back in 2016, during the Even Winter Conference in Zagreb, I held a keynote speech in which I emphasized the goals and activities that we need to undertake in order to foster a supportive environment for startups and angel investors alike. What has changed? How successful have we been in achieving these goals since then in Croatia? We have taken some big steps towards our ultimate goal, which is to build an agile, sustainable, modern, and higher added value-based economy. We still have a way to go, but certain improvements have been made, such as we achieved stable growth around 3% per year since 2016. It is not as high and strong as we would like it to be. My ambition is for our growth rate to be at least 5%. However, it is a significant improvement in relation to previous years. Our public debt has been in strong decline since 2016, with budget surplus achieved in the last two years. Administrative burdens and obstacles are constantly being removed with a large package of measures aimed at making it easier to do business in Croatia, which are scheduled to come into force in April of this year. Our investment climate has been improving for a number of years, making us more attractive to foreign direct investment. Tax reform has been conducted steadily and constantly for the third year in a row, easing the tax burden on businesses. And I keep encouraging the government to continue to reduce taxes. We also aim to become part of the Eurozone with the objective of entering the EU exchange rate mechanism in 2020. Of course, uh, part of the Schengen area and a member of the OECD. These activities have enabled the startup community in Croatia to foster and grow in a rather strong manner. This is evident in the fact that new companies in Croatia are those who are growing fastest often best adapted to the global economy and new trends. Large companies are the engines of our economy, tying SMEs with their value, supply, and production chain. But new small and medium companies, especially those in high-tech industries, are showing their strength as they are the biggest generations of new jobs and of new value. They are going through the standard phases of company growth much faster than before, and they are in a large part attuned to the rules and trends of modern economy. These companies have developed sometimes despite their surroundings and obstacles for doing business. We're working to improve the situation. Unfortunately, one problem still remains for these companies and other endeavors which is that in their early stages, accessing financing through bank loans is expensive, yet most accept, uh, accessible. If we want them to have the good chance and equal opportunities, we need to give them greater alternatives. And here is where you come in, where you can, should, and already are finding your place. Angel investors are those who step in during the early days of a company's life. Together with IBAN, they are developing Europe and countries like Turkey as hotspots of development, R&D, new enterprises and endeavors. Given impetus to new ideas for creative solutions and for adventures which young people would like to take but lack financial wind in their sails. This is crucial, risky, bold, and I dare say noble. Putting your hard-earned money to such use, taking extreme risks in something that gives no guarantee of return. Going through the early stages of growth with new companies time and time again. All of this requires an adventurous mind, strong will, and patience. And for this, I commend you. You have a critical role in creating new leaders and innovators and thus strengthening our economies. This first initial push and injection is necessary for our countries 
if we want to fight and compete in the new global economic climate. The global economic order is evolving, and we should stand together if we want to compete and even play in the same playing field together with economies such as the USA and rising economic powers from Asia. Our economic development should be based on knowledge, high quality products and services with high added value. We must focus on creating new employment opportunities that will bring in more income to our employees and our country as a whole. And in this respect, some major tasks lie ahead. We are of course aware that the Croatian economy cannot develop rapidly without international cooperation and foreign investment. The services and activities of your organization and your members are therefore not just welcome, but also greatly needed. Croatia has many competitive advantages over other countries in the region. Not only is it beautiful, as we've seen in this spot, but our strategic location at the crossroads of Central Europe and the Mediterranean, our labor productivity and quality, our high quality transport and business infrastructure and labor costs lower than in the countries from which most investments originate. Many foreign investors whom we wholeheartedly support have become aware of these advantages. Since 1993, they have invested more than 33.5 billion euros in Croatia. Turkish investors have taken part in this process and have mostly invested in Croatian tourism, banking, and energy sectors. Today, the most profitable and interesting sectors for investments are IT, engineering, electronics, metalworking, plastic manufacturing, pharmaceuticals, the automobile industry, and tourism. My most important message to you is that Croatia is open for business. It is up to you to explore the business opportunities and the projects that we offer. And it is up to us to provide you and all other business people with a competitive investment climate. However, it is difficult to expect the first steps to be successful without a structured system in which venture capital or private equity funds would follow an early phase of angel investments and subsequently a listing or sale to a foreign investor. Rest assured, Croatia is doing everything to improve the business climate. We want to save time and money for investors and give them the space they need to do what they know best, invest, produce, and employ. This certainly implies the development of a capital market because without one, there is no development of startups either. I'm pleased to say that at the end of, the, of last year, the Croatian government adopted an initiative proposed by our startup community, whereby pension funds may invest up to 0.2% of their assets in startup communities. Thanks to this initiative, more than 100 million kuna, approximately 13.5 million euros, will be available for Croatian startups, which should stimulate the entire scene. Furthermore, Croatia is implementing a number of reforms aimed at improving the business climate. We're repealing and simplifying various administrative procedures, reducing non-tax payments, and introducing new measures to stimulate production and innovative activities, from tax exemptions to direct incentives for capital expenditures for investment. I'm confident that the World Business Angels Investment Forum through its activities will make an immeasurable contribution to reach this goal. Ladies and gentlemen, let me quote Mr. Altuntas on the occasion of the opening of the office of the World Business Angels Investment Forum in Croatia. A relatively small country has become a center for business angels in Europe. You know, I watched the World Cup and so saw that no large country such as Germany, Turkey, made it to the finals, yet Croatia did. It doesn't matter how big a country is, but how big the dream is and how many people believe in it. What wonderful words. What you have said is indeed true. 
but in addition to a great dream and the people's confidence. What lied at the heart of the success of the Croatian national football team at the World Cup was their determination to take action and not to give up, to take risk, and most importantly, they played as a team. And in their victory, finally, and unfortunately, the defeat that came with it as well, when they achieved what they thought was impossible, they were modest, they remained humble. This is the kind of leadership that our football team displayed to the entire world. We could have had 11 outstanding individual players, but had they not worked together as a team, had they not demonstrated team spirit and lent support to each other, showed empathy and love for their homeland, they never would have won second place and the hearts of the people all over the world. The fact that an individual's excellence remains just that, and the fact that we have to recognize and accept our weaknesses and our failures is the key to collective success. And indeed, to achieve excellence, physical size is not what counts. One requires heart and persistence, and mostly to share one's vision with others and work together to achieve success. The size of a territory is not important. What is important is the size and quality of an idea. Quantity is not the only measure of significance, but the determination to reach a goal. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I would like to tell you that Croatia, in addition to its outstanding football team, and in addition to the best football player in the world, Arluka Modric, or here in Turkey to mention Doma Goivida. We have so many more talented people like that in other areas of the economy and society. There is Marin Šoljačić, a modern Nikola Tesla who is developing a wireless power transfer. Iva Tolić with her revolutionary work in molecular cell biology. Ivan Mrvoš, inventor of small benches for cities of the future. Mate Rimac with his electric cars, to mention but a few among many others. I invite you to support such people in Croatia. Angels are heralds of God's messages, good messages and good news. I hope you will be a support to the economy, especially to new business opportunities that will facilitate the employment of young people. May you be those promoters, protectors, and facilitators of good business projects, ideas, and opportunities. I wish each and every one of you all the best in your business endeavors and in your personal life. Thank you very much. There we go. Madam President, thank you so much for that speech. Thank your you. big heart, your big dreams, and your big ideas, I'm sure, are going to inspire people to come to Croatia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There we go.